we tried to give you um, some perspective in HBV cure research. So you, you've already heard uh, the, the drugs that are in clinical development by, in, the, in the talk of um, uh, Pietro Lampertico yesterday. So here to, today we, we give you more on the uh, more information on the mechanistic uh, point of view because you, you've seen the, the clinical aspects. So just that, as an introduction um, uh, from where, where we stand in, in terms of uh, HBV therapy, um, we, you, you all know that with uh, nucleoside analog uh, therapy we can achieve valve suppression in the majority of patients with, with chronic hepatitis, whatever the, the stage, whether they, are, they have advanced uh, fibrosis or not. Uh, and this leads to uh, a decrease in inflammation uh, uh, and fibrosis and decrease Increased progression uh, of liver disease, uh, with uh, in the end a decrease in the incidence of um, hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, however, uh, the risk of HCC is not eliminated despite uh, uh, um, efficient valve suppression. Um, and we know that if we want to stop um, nuke therapy, uh, we need to achieve HBS antigen loss. And uh, unfortunately, this is achieved in only 10% of the patients after five to eight years of, uh, of therapy. So in the majority of patients, we, we need lifelong therapies. So this is really the reason why we, we need to do much better than, than vowel suppression and try, uh, and if we were able to achieve this type of finite duration treatment, we would be able to, uh, to treat even more patients than what we are doing now. So um, what, what are the, the goal? Um, uh, they have been defined by the uh, uh, international societies, the uh, uh, American and, and, and European uh, Association for Study of Liver Disease. So what we want to achieve is, is with a finite duration treatment, uh, a loss of HBS antigen in, in, in serum um, uh, that we would call the um, uh, functional cure. Um, and w when you, you look at um, what's, what would happen in the, in the liver is that we, we would be in a situation where um, um, HBS would be lost, but in the liver of patients, we would still have um, a, a CCC DNA, so that's the viral mini chromosome, the re reservoir of the virus uh, in, in, in the liver, uh, and some obviously integrated uh, sequences that would be still there. So the uh, uh, current uh, objectives from, for the community is really to achieve functional cure with new therapies whether we will be able to achieve a, a complete cure with the eradication of CCC DNA uh, remains to be seen uh, uh, further down the road and achieving a sterilizing cure where we would be able to eradicate CCC DNA uh, and integrated sequences um, is uh, today uh, considered as a dream. So we'll have to, to go in a step, stepwise manner. So the barriers to eradicating HBV are, are, are on both the viral side and on the immune response side. So we, uh, in terms of the virus, we, uh, we have to um, deal with the fact that the uh, viral mini chromosome, the CCC DNA, has a very long half-life. It is uh, really an archive of the virus. So, so um, uh, we need to have specific uh, uh, treatments to, to target this, uh, this reservoir. And we have also to face the fact that the immune responses are, are, are defective and we, we, we know that um, uh, HBV specific T cells and B cells are, are, are exhausted and they are also e e uh, inefficient innate responses. So for, in terms of viral uh, targets, here, here you have a, a schematic representation of the uh, uh, viral uh, life cycle. Um, uh, and again, to point, to point out again that the uh, CCC DNA is really um, uh, the major uh, um, target for, for the new uh, therapies. Um, CCC DNA is an episomal form of the DNA. It, it is a template for all transcripts, including the pregenomic RNA. It is cr chromatinized in, 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 um, in a mini chromosome like structure. 
and it's not replicated by, by semi-conservative uh, mechanism. And, and as I told you, it has a very long half-life in cell culture and, uh, and in vivo. Uh, besides CCC DNA, uh, we have also uh, integrated form of, of our DNA that are not uh, involved in, in the replication cycle of the virus, but may lead to development of liver cancer. So regarding CCC DNA, there have been quite some new information regarding its formation. So, so when, when the virus enters the cell and then uh, releases the uh, relaxed circular DNA in the nucleus of infected cells, there, there is a, uh, a DNA repair me me mechanism use, using um, 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 uh, the uh, cellular uh, DNA repair machinery that converts the relaxed circular DNA in a covalently closed circular DNA. Um, but there are also other uh, mechanisms that are involved in uh, the um, f um, formation of a chromatin uh, structure. Uh, and we showed in, in, in the lab recently uh, that uh, the DNA repair and the chromatinization of, of CCC DNA is, is uh, um, uh, it relied on the on, on, on um, uh, Eastern Chaperon, which is called IRA, and this Eastern Chaperon IRA uh, recognized the uh, uh, relaxed circular DNA that has a nick in, in DNA, uh, and will initiate the uh, repair mechanism and the dip deposition of histones. Um, so this is a, a, a mechanism by which um, the virus may be involved by, by the core protein, and this may be a, a new uh, a vowel target to, to prevent chromatinization and formation of CCC DNA. The uh, CCC DNA follows a, an epigenetic regulation because it is uh, wrapped with histones, and depending on the status of the, uh, of the acetylation status or methylation status of histones, uh, then we will have uh, either a, um, a very active, um, uh, transcriptionally active CCC DNA that, sh that is usually hyperacetylated uh, and it's associated with high replication. Or we can have uh, um, um, a very closed conformation of CCC DNA where transcription is repressed and usually it is associated with hypoacetylation of, uh, um, uh, of histones. So what we've learned in the very recent years is that the uh, vowel X protein, the HBX protein, uh, is involved in the uh, CCC DNA uh, transcription. Uh, and it was shown that this um, a protein that, that had at that time an enigmatic role um, just a few years ago um, was shown to um, uh, prevent the, uh, an epigenetic silencing of CCC DNA. And the main mechanism was that uh, the HBX uh, can lead to the degra degradation of the SMAC5 uh, uh, restriction uh, factor complex um, that lead to a release in the transcription activity of, of CCC DNA. Uh, and HBX has also some other function because it is associated with uh, an, um, an acetylation uh, uh, profile of the, of the histone. So everything leads to a more active transcription uh, of CCC. DNA. So here, if we could know more about uh, HBX function, this could be a way to uh, target specifically HBX and, and, and silence uh, CCC DNA. So it's kind of uh, opposite uh, direction from the HIV uh, uh, shock and kill uh, strategy. Here, we would like to, to silence uh, uh, the CCC DNA. Uh, what we know about the persistence of CCC DNA in terms of the amount of the uh, reservoir in, inside the cell, um, we, we've studied in a, in a co-infected uh, cohort, so HIV, HBV co-infected patients who received tenofovir therapy for, for many years. Um, we had the, the, the chance to, to have several uh, uh, assessments in these patients uh, for, for HBV. Um, and obviously all these patients were in valve suppression for HBV. HBV, and we, we saw that the, by quantification of HBS antigen in serum that the, the, the levels were really plateauing despite uh, a very good vowel suppression uh, and, and for many years. And for some patients we had uh, uh, paired liver biopsies that were available uh, and we showed that this is in the uh, open circle that the decline of CCC DNA despite vowel suppression uh, was very, very slow. Um, and 
the uh, mathematical uh, modeling suggested that um, uh, during tenofovir therapy in these patients, new round of infection occurred, uh, or that a replenishment of the CCC DNA uh, pool um, occurred despite the so-called viral suppression. So in the end, it means that um, um, in patients who have undetectable or un non-quantifiable viral DNA in serum, there might still be some viral replication ongoing. Um, and this was uh, actually very nicely demonstrated uh, in a very recent um, study um, um, published at the, uh, I mean, presented at the ESL in, in Vienna a few weeks ago, where they, the, the Gilead people uh, look at their trials and they showed that uh, uh, in the tenofovir trials, uh, they had some, uh, quite some patients here uh, who were um, HBV DNA target detected, but not quantifiable. And they use these serum samples to uh, infect uh, uh, humanized mice, um, and they showed that uh, actually the patients, who, uh, the sera from patients with uh, HBV DNA below the lower limit of quantification were, were still, in, still infectious. So, so clearly it, it, this was demonstrating that the so-called vowel suppression is not complete at all. So this, this uh, 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 allows to maintain the pool of CCC DNA in, in the liver. Uh, so we have a, a, steady, a steady state pool of CCC DNA, we, which is the result of uh, uh, new rounds of uh, uh, infections or replenishment within the cell. I'm sorry, so I have to go back. Um, or to, uh, and a balance with the loss of CCC DNA. Uh, so how can we um, 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 uh, Work on this uh, on this steady state and and and, and change the uh, uh, the overall balance. Um, so there are several concepts that are being developed to, to decrease the pool of CCC DNA. One obvious is to try to inhibit CCC DNA formation, but there's a main target that have been. Um, 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 uh, identified are of, of cellular origin, so it will be very difficult to tackle the, uh, this unless we find a var, uh, virus specific mechanism that we could target. Um, and there are ways to, and we'll, I will come back to that, to decrease the replenishment of CCC DNA by, by interfering with uh, new rounds of infection or by interfering with the intracellular replenishment of the CCC DNA pool. There, one might think of inducing CCC DNA loss by, by inducing hepatocyte turnover, um, and uh, we can also uh, think of inducing degradation of CCC DNA. Uh, and if we, uh, the, the other point is also to try to, to silence CCC DNA if we were not able to, to, to eradicate the, the, whole, the whole pool of CCC DNA. So now, uh, how can we go through uh, uh, an inhibition of the replenishment of CCC DNA? Um, so for, for that, uh, there are several um, possibilities. One is to prevent new rounds of infection, and, um, and uh, we know now the uh, receptor for, for viral entry. It was discovered only um, uh, recently, say seven years ago now. So that's uh, NTCP, so he, uh, that's a bile, bile salt uh, transporter, um, which is expressed at the uh, hepatocyte membrane. And there are uh, entry inhibitors that have been uh, developed, and one uh, which is the mo most advanced is Mircludex, so that's a, a pres one peptide that mimics the, um, uh, um, the envelope domain uh, of the virus that interact with the receptor and prevents, uh, therefore, the uh, entry of the virus. Uh, and I'm sure uh, yesterday uh, Pietro uh, showed you some, some clinical data, uh, especially uh, uh, in the HBV, HDV co-infected patients. Um, so it was shown in preclinical models that uh, uh, this, the Mircludex inhibits new rounds of infection. Um, it has the potential to decrease the pool of CCC DNA on the long term, but this will need also to have some uh, cell turnover. So, so th this might require the very long uh, therapies to, um, uh, to, uh, to see a decline of CCC DNA. So the, the real question now is, um, now that this drug is really in phase three trials for, for, for in some indications, 
application. Um, how are we going to combine uh, the entry inhibitor with other uh, uh, antivirals to, 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 to um, accelerate the um, uh, CCC DNA decay? Uh, if we go down to, to the um, life cycle, there are uh, um, very interesting, exciting uh, development of new class of, uh, uh, of drugs, which, which are called capsid assembly modulators. Um, they are mainly of two class. Uh, historically, it was the um, uh, heteroaryl dipyrimidine derivatives, or AP series, uh, which lead to uh, formation of capsid with, with um, uh, aberrant Morphology um, and the other class uh, came initially from the phenylpropanamide derivatives, uh, which preserve the uh, normal morphology of the, of the uh, uh, capsid. But in the end, um, pregenomic RNA uh, encapsidation is uh, altered, so leading to a decreased viral replication. And there's a lot of drugs that are being developed in, in preclinical models, but also in in the clinics. There are at least five drugs that are now in phase two clinical trials, and I'm sure uh, Pietro showed you the, the results ye uh, yesterday of the phase 1b studies. So, so far it looks good for the phase 1b, so we, it's early stage. What was very interesting with these capsid assembly modulators is that uh, besides their effect on nucleocapsid uh, packaging, um, say it was shown that they can also prevent uh, CCC DNA formation. So when they are administered prior to inoculation of the virus, uh, you can see here that uh, we can see an inhibition of CCC DNA uh, uh, formation. So this might be a, a, an additional uh, mode of action that might be very interesting. Uh, so here you see the replication uh, cycle with the uh, where the, the point of uh, action of the nucleoside analog so the uh, capsid assembly modulators ca can work uh, on the canonical mode of action, which is the uh, uh, nucleocapsid uh, uh, formation, but they can also work on by, by preventing the disassembly of the nucleocapsid in the nucleus of infected cells. So that could could have an effect on the uh, de novo formation of CCC DNA, but also on the replenishment uh, of CCC DNA. Now we'll have to see whether in with longer administration we will see a de decrease in the pool of CCC. CDNA or not. Um, uh, what is really uh, the question with these drugs, uh, provided that they uh, show uh, a prolonged uh, uh, efficacy with the phase two trials and, and also a, a good safety profile, will be to know uh, how we will be able to. Uh, um, to, to achieve a curative uh, regimen, uh, whether this will be uh, alone with nucleoside analog or whether the, we will need something else uh, to, make, to make this regimen uh, curative. So this is, uh, we'll have to see uh, in, the, in the near future. There is uh, also in the field uh, a lot of excitement with uh, siRNA to target the viral transcripts uh, of the virus. Uh, a, a few companies have really invested a lot uh, in that approach, um, and the idea was to um, to target um, all the transcript by targeting the three prime end of the transcript, which is common to all transcript with um, siRNAs, um, and actually some some companies had some uh, difficulties to the uh, arrowhead initially uh, because they, they were targeting the extreme three prime end of the of the, of the transcript and, and this um, three prime end of the transcript may be affected by um, integration uh, of our sequences and the, this uh, three prime end may be uh, may be lost during the uh, integration processes so they had to redesign after the clinical trials and uh, doing a lot of molecular biology in patients and in, uh, in chimpanzee experiments, which were the last, I guess, done in, in this field, um, they, they had to redesign their uh, sRNA to be a little bit upstream, so they restarted uh, uh, new clinical trials um, uh, and showed that the, their new design was, was correct, um, and, and now they are entering phase two clinical trials. 
uh, and they have also um, uh, modified their delivery system and now they use a Galnac uh, conjugate for, for sub Q administration, which is much, much easier. Uh, one of the questions is that by targeting the transcript, so the, there is a decline in HBS antigen that you may have seen yesterday with, with Pietro's uh, presentation. The question is whether this decline in HBS antigen may be one of the factors to restore um, um, uh, a T cell function, so antiviral immunity, so that uh, we would be in a better uh, position by lowering antigenic load to, to restore uh, the uh, specific um, uh, HBV immunity. There's also an, uh, another class of drugs which is a little bit mysterious, which is called uh, nucleic acid polymers, um, which is developed by, by Replicor and, uh, and was shown to inhibit the release of, uh, of our particles. This is the, um, so here we have to face the two, two different questions. One, one is the mode of action, which is not completely clear, and this, the other thing is that their clinical trial design was not uh, optimal. But in the end, the latest trials that they've shown, where they've shown results, show like 50% functional cure, which is something that has never been achieved with any drug. So we we'll have to see what's going on with this with this class of drug. So, so that's for the uh, replenishment of the, of the pool of CCC DNA. Now, now is whether we can increase the loss. So one, one possibility is to induce cell turnover, but it, and this was shown very nicely in, in humanized mouse model, where you, when by inducing uh, a cell turnover, you could see a depletion of CCC DNA pool. But inducing cell turnover in a, in a liver where you have um, um, cells that are more integrated sequences with already clonal expansion of, of some cells uh, would not be a very good uh, approach in my, in my view um, because of the uh, potential for uh, oncogenesis cell. Um, now to is there a way to uh, induce a degradation of CCC DNA and, and have a direct elimination of, of CCC DNA? There was a first proof of concept study that was done in cell culture experiment and published in, in Science by the, the group of Ulla Prozer in, uh, in Munich, uh, where they showed that uh, interferon alpha and uh, lymphotoxin beta can induce an apobec dependent uh, degradation of, uh, of, of CCC DNA. So so this uh, results um, is still a a matter of debate because he, he, uh, there are some um, uh, studies suggesting that uh, um, um, there were some issues with the technology for CCC DNA detection and quantification uh, and also some uh, uh, um, uh, issues re regarding what we know in the clinic because interferon therapy uh, in, in patients doesn't lead to uh, uh, eradication of CCC DNA. So there's still a lot to, to be done uh, in that respect. So we, with the CRISPR technology, you've heard about it just in, in the previous talk, there are some studies done in, in cell culture experiment where it was shown that if you target the uh, uh, viral CCC DNA with the CRISPR-Cas9 technology, uh, you can lead to a, a, a quite a efficient uh, cleavage of HBV DNA. Over 90% uh, of HBV DNA can be cleaved and repaired um, and uh, in and the repair um, mechanism may lead to uh, non-functional CCC DNA, leading to uh, uh, cells that do not express the virus anymore. Obviously, we are far from the uh, clinical application there, uh, but this is uh, something to, to, to explore, to continue to explore. What is interesting is that at the let, latest ESL uh, uh, conference, there was uh, Roche presented um, uh, a study, a uh, preclinical study, where they, they found a small molecule that targets the CCC DNA pool, uh, and, uh, and this drug was shown to uh, degrade, I mean, to lead to, to to, to lead to um, a decrease in the CCC DNA pool in, in hepatocyte culture, uh, in different mo models of, uh, of hepatocyte culture, and in a, a mouse model uh, using a mini-circle uh, CCC DNA, they, they showed that the uh, uh, HBS antigen in, in serum and HBV DNA in serum declined uh, in, in these mice. So this 
look promising. We'll have to see what is the exact mode of action of this, of this new drug. Um, Regarding the uh, immunity, so, uh, I'll go to, to, yeah, to an end. Um, regarding the immunity, the antiviral Im immunity, so as you know, there's a, a, a problem is that most of the patients have a, uh, exhausted T cells, and there are uh, several ways to restore antiviral immunity, either to boost uh, um, innate immunity, and mainly with TLR uh, agonists, or to boost um, uh, the adaptive immunity by blocking uh, in inhibitory signals or uh, by stimulating the remaining T cells by, by vaccine therapy or even by engineering uh, uh, HPV specific T cells. Just to show you some example of, of, of trials that have been done in that field, TLR7 agonists have, have showed excellent results, promising results in, in, in animal models. But in patients, uh, they failed, completely failed. Um, there was no, no uh, uh, induction of HBS antigen clearance and so on, to make a story short. Um, now there are some other uh, innate immunity um, uh, uh, boosters that are being um, evaluated. In Arigivir, a Rigai agonist is being um, uh, developed in clinical trials. So it is now in phase two trials. Uh, and it's inducing uh, types three interferon shows promising results in, in, in phase two, so we'll have to see uh, how to combine it with other approaches. Regarding adaptive immunity, it was shown almost uh, 10 years ago now by the group of Carlo Ferrari in Parma um, that by uh, 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 um, using ex vivo T cells, T cells, ex vivo culture of T cells coming from the liver of infected patients, uh, that uh, PD1 blockade can restore um, a T cell function in, in, in patients, in, in, in ex, sorry, ex vivo in, uh, from uh, uh, T cells coming from patients. Um, there was, uh, and I will come back to that in a moment, uh, there was also a very uh, interesting study with a new therapeutic vaccine, so there have been several waves of therapeutic vaccines. Again, a very promising uh, T-cell vaccine. It was designed to elicit HBV-specific T-cell responses, but again, when you look at the results in clinical trials uh, in terms of uh, HBS decline, it was very marginal and no HBS loss. So then there was a, 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 an idea of why tr not trying to combine a, a checkpoint inhibitor to restore the function of exhausted T cells and then combine with a, a therapeutic vaccine. Uh, and obviously we had to go very, very uh, uh, cautiously because uh, PD-1 blockade is not so obvious, especially in patients who are doing very well on nukes, so we have to be very careful uh, in terms of safety. So they used uh, uh, just a single dose of nivolumab, uh, a very low dose, uh, and there was one arm uh, in, in blue with a combination with a previous vaccine. And if you look at the week 24 results, so they, uh, they, sh they showed a marginal effect on HBS antigen in the uh, uh, monotherapy arm, nivolumab alone, just one pa single patient uh, cleared HBS, whether it's by chance or, or, or not, we, we don't know. Just a few patients here. Um, and the combination arm seems to, uh, to have a, uh, a little bit more of HBS antigen decline, so you can see it either way. Uh, but now they are continuing uh, very careful uh, uh, um, clinical evaluation of this combination, because we, do, we want to avoid flares and autoimmunity uh, in these patients who are doing very well on, on tenofovir for instance. And there are innovations in immunotherapy. You heard about CAR T cells in, uh, uh, for HIV and the, the, the same type of approach, a little bit different with uh, TCR engineering. Uh, and there was a very nice uh, uh, proof of concept study done by uh, Antonio Bertolitti, published in, in, in gastroenterology, uh, showing that this approach in, in animal models can, can be uh, very interesting. So now we, we are at a stage where we have a lot of different 
possibilities, uh, direct antivirals and immunotherapeutic approaches. And the real question now will be how to, uh, uh, to combine uh, these different uh, uh, approaches. Uh, so we have, for antivirals, we have the new, we have capsid inhibitors, the sRNA. Um, and for immune restoration, we have uh, TLR agonists, checkpoint inhibitors, therapeutic vaccines. So now you have to, to see that all these are in phase 1B or entering phase 2. And there are uh, companies now doing uh, platform trials. Uh, where, where they can combine their, their, own, their own drugs uh, for, for the same population of patients and we will see how it goes. They are just starting now, so it's very, very exciting and very promising. Uh, and I would like to thank your attention and thank my collaborators uh, in Lyon and elsewhere in the world. Thank you.